welcome yourselves back to the channel. Subscribe and like as always if you're new and you enjoyed the video. It is finale time, season two finale of Waterley Road. Um, an enjoyable experience, I think. You know, I think what the first two seasons did, uh, getting to this point with you know Lorna, Izzy, Tom, <coughs> Rimmer, Treadman, Kim. Roger, Brett, Chloe, Mika, Dante, Janice, all these characters that were involved in these storylines. It led to this finale that I think was just executed brilliantly. There's a few things that were left open to the beginning of season three that we're going to talk about now, of course, but spoilers ahead. And I hope you enjoy the video. And let me know down below in the comments your thoughts on season two. I'm going to do a full season review soon. So I'll wait that. And of course, we'll be diving into season three from tomorrow so stay tuned for that of course and let's talk about it so you know what i've loved the past few episodes is you know the american um the american guys come in the uh the guy who's gonna be putting the money in <clears throat> the funds in the person who's brainwashing all these kids and i, I want to have a conversation like this this is waterly road but it's also external to waterly road you know you see the kind of stuff he's trying to do, you know, he's against abortion, you see he's against uh, stem cells, uh, replacement, uh, donate, donoring, or whatever it is, um, massive, uh, pure Christians or Catholics or whatever it is, uh, religious groups are massively against homosexuals, but there are certain people within that group, and he was, he was trying to, it was a very good lesson because he was trying to force that literally his beliefs are his beliefs. He was never open to the idea of different things or different opinions or, you know, he wanted these kids to be brainwashed. And I loved how Treneman stood up against him. I loved this scene. I, it was very hard for him to, to watch because you saw Jack, Tom, Izzy, Andrew, Kim, Roger was there, all the kids were there for Lorna's memorial. And for, for the American dude, I can't, I can't remember his name. Um, to call Lorna weak before death was just the, the, the tipping point for Treadman, and that's, I think this is why I stand by this this opinion that Treadman is the best character. He's been the best character since day one. His rules, what he's implemented to the school, the way he interacts with kids, his influence on people like Janice. Um, I just think what he, the way he stood up to him, the way he delivered his beliefs, the way he wanted the kids to be free to think what they wanted, whether it was religious, scientific, whatever it may be. And I think that <coughs> why it was so good. You know, there's a bunch of other stuff that went on there. Steph, I think she massively went down on the character list for me because she was just stirring the pot to appease nobody. She basically got the Venus sacked by telling Roger and the American dude about that she slept with uh brett and obviously jack finally came to his senses about the whole academy thing telling them both to shove it up their ass i think jack was a tough nut to crack the past couple of episodes because he was so determined so willing to make this academy happen so the kids would have a better place to come better facilities but i think it came to a point where he saw all these things that were so horrible that they were trying to shut down and the beliefs they were trying to force down people's throats i think it was a very valuable episode in the sense of um <clears throat> you know Treadman was finally sick of Rimmer. He was um Treadman walked away from everything that he had built and attempted to team up with Rimmer to do and by the end of it he chose the academy and uh, religious beliefs and the, the buildings over what Treadman thought, what the kids thought, what the kids were dealing with. And that's why I think Rimmer and Treadman were very different but very good in their own ways. Because by the end of it Rimmer got Davina back at his last moments in the series, although he didn't die, his face off with Seren after, you know, finding their drug den in the episode. Lewis having one of the best arcs in Waterloo Road, in my opinion, from being this druggy, idiot, assaulting, sexualizing, vindictive person, to being this person who's trying to change, to making an error with drugging Chloe, to being beaten by his uncle, to being the person who puts his auntie away in prison, and obviously Seddon is on the run now, not Lewis, but the, the uncle, after killing Izzy. <coughs> It was such an emotional build-up as well for this. You know, the last conversation between Chloe and Izzy was that Chloe went to get married to Dante and that um that she wanted 
she'd, she'd run away, basically, and that Tom would have a nice meal ready for Izzy when she came out after clubs. Raymond was dealing with, obviously, Roger and the American dude and closing that deal off. And obviously, them two were going hand in hand. And the emotional thing was, Izzy ran over without a second four, and I thought that was... Uh, uh, it was a... It showed how strong her character was. It showed that it didn't matter who it was. She'd die for a job. And obviously she did. She didn't notice that Seddon had a knife. It all, I mean, say what you want. The fight was between Rimmer and Seddon. Seddon never intended to kill. Uh, never intended to kill her. But of course, that is what it led to be. It led to the death of Izzy. He turned around and out of nothing, he stabbed her. She did not know he had a knife. He did not know. He did not see her coming. Or the place on his knife. And ultimately, as I said, it was an untimely death. Rimmer screaming out Izzy. No phone. No way of helping her. Just watching her die in his arms. Whilst, you know, Davina was waiting for Rimmer to come to the restaurant after, you know, a, a long day and reinstating her. Tom and Mika and Chloe were waiting for Izzy to come home. Kim and Andrew were having a conversation and hoping that Kim would join Andrew in Rwanda. And yeah, it just ended a way I knew it ended. I I, I knew, I, I always thought it was Lewis, you know, because I've not seen it in years, but obviously I wasn't far off. It was a sedum. And kind of crazy because it's a very big mirror of what we saw at the end of season one with Rimmer getting the shit kicked out of him by Lewis. And it goes to show it is a it is a descendant of, of Lewis that basically attempts to kill Rimmer this time. And I just found what they did, the way they ended it. I'm glad the Academy was finished. Obviously, we know certain characters haven't got long left in the show. I believe Rimmer's got four episodes left. Something like that. Um, Treadman has left. I don't know. I know Kim leaves the show at some point, but I don't know if she's left yet. Um, but yeah, a, a, a t- terrific. And I also want to say Dante's maturity has gone so far. Chloe is ashamed of what happened, you know, being drugged by Lewis. Um, probably through the episode on her 16th birthday, and she came to a point where. Dante was like, I, nothing happened. Ginny's helped with getting your clothes back on, this sort of stuff. And it, it's amazing. But it goes to show they try to ruin Chloe's character again. It's like, you know, she was awful in season one. She's been fantastic in season two. She's matured a lot. And now she's willing to run away. But I'm guessing now that she'll probably find out that as he's death, everything will change. And now Tom is going to be in absolute bits after losing Lorna in episode 10. And now Izzy, episode 12. And now he must take care of two girls who, you know, he sort of married his life into because he was about to marry uh, Izzy. So, yeah, you know, not much else to say, but a fantastic season. Ups and downs. Um, But I'm looking forward to giving a full season review of it. So check that out when it does. Check out the rest of the episodes from this series. Do let me know down below in the comments your thoughts on episode 12 of the finale to season 2. And of course, expect season 3 to debut on the channel very soon. I actually think this is the first season coming up where it is, if I'm not mistaken, 20 episodes. Um... I'll just quickly check. I hope so, because, you know, a lot more... St- I mean, it all depends on how you extend the storylines and whatnot. Um, season 3. Yep, Season 3 is the first season to have 20 episodes and will have consistent 20 episodes until Season 7, where it gets, re-incre- where it gets increased again. So, exciting, exciting times. And this was also the last season before it got a massive drop in views before re-increasing the four season six. So, do stay tuned for more coming your way very soon, as well as series review, character lists, and some comparisons to other seasons. And until next time, subscribe and like. Thanks for watching, as always. Goodbye.